Hi everyone, Ron Kreider reporting for duty today, October the 27th. Today is Tuesday, my day 225. I'm reporting the numbers from my condo here in Vero Beach at Victoria, uh, Indian River Shores. Seven days, seven days until Election Day. Can hardly wait. <laughs> Hardly wait for it to be over. 59 days until Christmas, 65 days left in this year. 21 days of radiation of 43. 43 days, but I've already done 21, so I'm doing pretty good. And uh, the time changes this weekend on November the 1st, so we are going to fall back. And then this number that's always so important is the positive versus testings. And that number is 6.28, and that is always supposed to be under 5 and going down, and it went up to 6.28. So that's not a good thing. Uh, let me give you the numbers. I'm going to quickly give you the numbers, and then I'll give you the numbers. I have all the numbers today for the uh, counties that we report each day. I didn't have them yesterday. I apologize. They did come in yesterday, though, so I sort of jumped the gun, but I didn't want to get too far behind because I start running into my 3 o'clock program. All right, so today, 53 new deaths reported in the past 24 hours. Yesterday, we had 19. That's 34 more. You'll see these up here on the screen and over there. Uh, 4,298 new positives. That's 921 more than yesterday. Yesterday, we had 3,377. So red and red there. However, we do have a little bit of green over here for the seven-day moving averages. Seven-day moving averages, 71.43. Yesterday, it was 76. Sunday, it was 81. Saturday, it was 86. Friday, it was 87. So the seven-day moving averages seem to be coming down. That's a very good thing. We like that. Moving averages mean 71 people died each day for the past seven days based on our seven-day moving averages. Okay, so those were those numbers that you see up there. All the numbers should be on the chart, and you can kind of watch those as I tell you all the rest of the things that are going on. Hot off the press from my buddy Danny. Danny, I keep telling you, is just the smartest guy I know. I mean, I know some smart people, but not quite as smart as Danny. And Danny's kept in touch with me and lets me know what's going on. He says, hi, Ron. Hope you continue to do well with your treatment. You're back wearing your usual shirts, which I think is a good sign. <laughs> I get, and the, You can never tell what a good sign is. Yeah, I got my, uh, see what I got here? I got my polo shirt on. All right. It's amazing how different states are reacting to the numbers. New York, New Jersey, the positive testing rate is over 1.5%. The health officials swooped in to control the mini clusters, putting restrictions on very small areas as needed. I noticed that in other parts of the country, they have not taken such aggressive measures. This may account for the surge in cases in the Midwest and the Plain States where the hospitals are at capacity. There is hope. The very fact that New York has such few fatalities is a testament to aggressive contact tracing. And in parentheses, he says, sometimes not very popular uh, for these prevention policies. This has saved countless lives as the fatality rate has plummeted from almost 800 per day to less than 20 per day. Now we're talking about Jersey and New York. Let's hope and pray that the second surge will not be as bad as the first. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. So that's Danny reporting in from Jersey and New York up there. He lives down here. He's a runner, and he's a mathematician, and he's got. I mean, I'm going to bring him over and have him on the program with me because he's the guy that's responsible for the way I report the numbers. I hope that's not really making him look bad and me looking good because if it's anything, anybody's bad, it would be me. No, Danny does a really good job. It's the, I think Sometimes I misunderstand what he says, and then I come across looking like the idiot, which is because I am sometimes. Hey, I got some more news from WINK-TV in Fort Myers. COVID-19 cases are on the rise in 35 states. The southwest Florida area is also seeing more uh, positive cases. Experts say large family gatherings and mixed uh, messages may be to blame. So here's the deal. We're going to be having a lot of family gatherings as we get into November for Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the holidays and all that sort of thing. And it, quite frankly, it's probably going to drive the numbers up. The governor says the worst of the pandemic is behind us, and he says that planning your holiday gatherings is safe and encouraged. I don't, hey, you know me, I'm pretty far right here, and I'm generally lined up with Governor DeSantis, but I don't necessarily think that he knows 
that that's exactly what he should be saying. But he said it nonetheless. He's entitled to his opinion. Personally, I think that you're just getting a whole lot of people together from all over the place and bringing them in is going to create a problem. There's no question about it. We've talked about this so many times. Dr. Fauci said, on the other hand, uh, he is in support of a nationwide mask mandate. So who do we believe? This, is, this was reported by WINK-TV over there in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. So uh, we are having a bit of a problem with these cases all over the United States. And add to the confusion, the flu season is coming. So who knows what that's going to mean? So here's what we really need to consider doing, folks. Same thing as we've always done. You know, I, every day they spend so much time on radio and TV telling you all about all the theories and so forth. The theories are very simple. We still don't have a cure. We don't have a vaccine. We have uh, some things that you can take if you get it to kind of shorten the amount of time you may have to be in the hospital. The best way to not get COVID-19 is to not go anywhere. And I said this yesterday, you can't not do that. Wear a mask, distant space, don't be a covid idiot. Come on, guys, let's get it together here. As we get into the holidays, let's not drive these numbers up. Now, there is a good possibility that we may actually see a uh, vaccine very close to the end of the year, but we won't have enough for all of us to get it, and we won't have enough until early into next year if, in fact, it does show up and if, in fact, it gets approval. So that's kind of where we are right now. Now, anyway, that's my story for today, and I'm sticking to it, okay? Here we go with the weather forecast for the Treasure Coast today. 20% chance of rain. Uh, sunny to partly cloudy today. Stray showers or thunderstorms are possible. High about 88 degrees. And we're going to uh, see about uh, the winds east at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then tonight, 10% chance of rain. Some clouds, low 77. The winds east 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow on Wednesday, we're going to have 20% chance of rain possibility. Partly cloudy, high 86. Winds east southeast 10 to 15 miles per hour. Alrighty, folks, I am going to pop right in here to the numbers, and you'll be able to see the numbers for the state. I'm also going to, for you folks who live here in Vero Beach, I'm going to be reporting on zip code 32967. Lizzie asked me to do that. Lizzie is my uh, unofficial adopted sister. I'm her older brother. So uh, very, that's all very unofficial stuff, but we work together and we, we kind of behave more like brothers and sisters. And anyway, that's flyover Lizzie, and she's on her way. She's driving over to Vero Beach, and she'll be here probably, hopefully, for our uh, Halloween party. So uh, we're going to jump right in here for the, for the numbers, and then as soon as the, we do the numbers, I'm coming back. i give you a, some quick shout-outs today, a couple other little things to report. Here we go. Numbers. Alrighty, folks, here we are in the numbers department. I'm going to give you the numbers for the entire state of Florida first. Then I'll give you county by county up the east coast of Florida. Today is Tuesday, October the 27th. I got these numbers about 1145, right around 1145, 12 noon. Right now it is about 1213 as I'm putting this together. Yes, we do have red on the screen pretty much everywhere except for one spot, but let's Let's start out with the entire state of Florida. 53 new deaths reported in the past 24 hours for the entire state of Florida. Yesterday, that number was 19. That's 34 more than yesterday. With positives, yesterday we had 3,377. Today, we have 4,298. That's 921 more than yesterday. So, uh, yes, Mondays and Sundays usually are low numbers. We get into Tuesday, the numbers start coming up, and Wednesday and Thursday, and then you know, who knows what's going to happen on Friday. Iowa, it's too hard to predict. Sorry about that. Let's move on. Miami-Dade County, nine new deaths reported in the past 24 hours, 727 new positives. In Broward County, Fort Lauderdale, no new deaths to report. Way to go, Broward. 376 new positives. In Palm Beach County, Three new deaths to report, 356 new positives. Okay, now here we are in Orange County. That's Orlando. No new deaths to report. Way to go up there in Orlando. 250 new positives. In Brevard County, that would be Melbourne. One new death to report, 166 new positives. St. Lucie County, that's Fort Pierce. 
one new death to report, 59 new positives. And in Martin County, that's Stewart, no new deaths to report, good going down there in Stewart, 20 new positives. And here we are in Indian River County, this is where we live, no new deaths to report, way to go Indian River County, 27 new positives. Then zip code 32960, there were nine new positives. And in zip code 32963, that's over here on the Barrier Island, there were uh, were three new positives. Now I'm going to start reporting to you zip code 32967, but I can't give you the number for today, but I can give you the total number is 612. Tomorrow I will be able to fill this number in for you. Apologize for that, but when I add it, the first day I add it, I can't only give you the total number in 32967, which is 612. Tomorrow I'll be able to give you the difference. Now, let's take a look back, go back up here. I forgot to tell you one thing. So our daily average is supposed to be under 5%. Today it's 628 not good at all. We don't like that. That's bad. This is the number of people that were tested versus the number of people who got positive reports. 6.28. Now, they say, well, it has a lot to do with the fact that we're doing a tremendous more testings. Yes, it does have a lot to do with that. But in addition to that, there seems to be a bit of a spread going on here. But I don't want to be Mr. Doom and Gloom today. Uh, I will say this, 71.43 is the seven-day moving average of deaths. So that means that about 71 persons passed away each day for the past seven days. It was 76 yesterday. It was 81 the day before, 86 before that, 87, and then 90. So it does look like we're going in the right direction with respect to to these deaths. I have to also remind you every time I talk about these deaths that it doesn't necessarily mean that any of these deaths happened in the past 24 hours or, or for each day in the past 24 hours. It just happens to be when they were reported to the state. And when they bring them in, then they get reported for that day. But it does not mean it happened that day. That's probably clear as mud, right? Well, anyway, that's it. they can't go back and tell you what it was three weeks ago and then go back and change the numbers from three weeks ago. So they, when they get the numbers in and they have not had them before, then they go into that particular day. Okay, now let's go take a look at the United States and how does the United States look in the past 48 hours. All right, Texas being in the number one spot, they had 52 deaths in the past 48 hours. Cal California is in the second place with 43 Tennessee was in third place. They're not usually up there with 32. Washington is in fourth place with 31. Look at Michigan in fifth place with 30. South Carolina in sixth place with 21. Arkansas in seventh place with 21. And then Florida was in eighth place with 19. We like falling down on that chart. That's really good. We're pretty happy with that. Then Georgia was in ninth place with 18. Illinois was in 10th place with 17. We'll go down a little bit further. We'll give you Massachusetts, we, which we refer to as Taxachusetts, in 12th place at 17. New York was in 13th place with 15. We'll go down a little bit further for the Hood family. In 15th place was Indiana with 13. Flyover Lizzie is no longer Flyover Lizzie. She is Drive Over Lizzie in 16th place for Iowa. Uh, deal with Iowa is that uh, she is now driving from Iowa back to Florida, and hopefully she'll be here for the Halloween party. 13, uh, Lizzie, 13 up there in Iowa, double-digit numbers, not good. You, you see that as soon as you left, things start going, falling apart. If you'd stayed there, you could have kept things under control. All right, Connecticut, 17th place in Connecticut with 12. Uh, Ohio in 18th place with 11 in Jersey for Danny. Danny just popped into the double digits here, buddy. You got 10 up there in New Jersey in Wisconsin, 20 for our Wisconsin folks. Uh, position number 20 with 10. We'll go down a little bit further. Of course, Wyoming's a very small state, but they had nine. And Missouri for the Carol Young, eight in Missouri. Mississippi, Mississippi had uh Eight, and they're in 24th place. Pennsylvania's in 25th place with seven. We'll go down a little bit farther um, and go to, let's see what else we have here of people. Oh, the Minnetonka folks, our Minnetonka friends. Uh, 
here we go. 30 and 30th place, and you got small single digit numbers. Four for Wayne and Dorothy up in Minnetonka, Minnesota. All right, and we'll go down to Delaware for Julie in Delaware. Only three, Julie. That's good. Three too many, but three is in low single digits. Hopefully, you'll be back here for the Halloween party. For Kentucky, three. Colorado is in 34th place with three. We'll go down just a teeny bit further for Utah. Our friends in Utah, Utah, 37th place with two. Small numbers are good. Small numbers are very good. We'll go down just a teeny bit further down here for uh, Kansas, one, 40 and 42nd place. Jay Grutman up there in Rhode Island, no, uh, one in 43rd place. We'll go down just a little bit further and nothing else to report here other than Maine didn't report anything, Alaska didn't report anything, and Vermont didn't report anything. Alrighty, folks, those are the numbers for the entire United States. Now we're going to take a look at what we refer to as the global view. The global view is the numbers, the big numbers. So USA cases, the total of USA cases that were positive is 8,610,703. USA deaths, 225,817. Global cases, huge number, 43,633,558. And global deaths, 1,161,422. And those are the numbers for today on Tuesday, October the 27th. All right, folks, I'm going to do a, some quick shout outs today for some of you fine folks who continue to watch this every day you know I, I i say please don't watch every day it's a little bit like weighing yourself and that you, you, it's so depressing because our numbers haven't changed a great deal yeah they go up they go down you know but the positivity rate goes up the positivity rate goes down and it's going to continue to be like this until we come up with a solution and the solution is obviously some form of a vaccine that will be we will be able to get inoculated and we probably will not get COVID-19 but right now there's no way out it's happening all over the world it's happening all over the United States we're getting into some form of a second wave I keep mentioning it probably because we're not as careful as we have been in the past when this first started we're just letting our guard down so let's not do that all right you folks are very nice to keep watching this like Marie Arnold and Diana Stark and I always say fly over Lizzie. Of course, Lizzie's on her way back here. Then Cheryl Deacon and uh, Al and Mary June, uh, Joan, Ellen, Elizabeth Hutchison, George, uh, Vanessa, uh, Miami, Tony, Miami, Kevin out in Houston. Thank you guys for watching very much. Wayne and Dorothy, they should be back in Minnetonka now. And uh, they're working folks. They're like me. You know, they, they work every pretty much every day and they get to come down here and stay a little bit. They're going to be down here uh, right after the first of the year. But I hope you had a safe trip back, guys. The Kennedys up on Long Island, they're going to be down here pretty soon. And uh, in Donna and Jim Davis. Jim Davis, absolutely you you hear him all over the place. His voice is, he's got an incredible voice, and he's a walking encyclopedia on the radio business, and he lives right here in Vero Beach. And he was a big star in major radio stations all over the country during the rock and roll era. What a nice guy he is, just a terrific guy. Raymond Kari still lives here. Captain Marsha's down at the gate. Good day, Captain Marsha. Danny up in Jersey, thank you for the note, Danny. Ron and Barb DeMolin, Jim Peabody, Britt. Betsy, Sherry Hale, Jay, Timothy, John Marks, and Kelly over at the Polo Deli. Stop by the Polo Deli, pick up some wine, get great prices on wine. I needed wine on Sunday. I didn't have wine on Sunday. Guess what I did? I got in my car. I drove to ABC. What an idiot. That was stupid. I turned around after I got to ABC and went back over to the uh, 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 riders right here on the beach, not very far from where I live. Let's face it, they're the new guy in town. We want to give them the business, and Polo is not open on Sunday. So I went to Riders and I got some nice wine at a good price. All wines under $26. And my next door neighbor is like uh, Heather Mason Wood. Good day, Heather. I haven't said a word to you for a while. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Gail Beeson, Carol, K A R O L, and then there's a C A R O L up in Missouri or Kentucky. Then Barb. Jay, Megan Davis, Diane, Joyce, Rosemary Biddle, Edith Stokes, Ginger, Barbara, Donna, Brenda, Costas, Donald, and Julie. My Facebook friends would be Mark and uh, Anne Haley Danshaw and George Ed, Kathleen, Bruce, Jay Parm. Very, very happy to have Jay Parm live down here. One of these days we're going to get him on the radio with us. We sort of get down to the end of this thing. There's Gene and Nancy Bicknell and Nancy Strazula, Susan Taylor, Marsha's friend. Barb Chandler, and Lisa Kreider-Brown, and that would be my daughter who watches every once in a while. 
She watches every once in a while because I went to her games when she was a cheerleader every once in a while. Pay dad back. That's what she's doing for me. Okay, that's no problem. I can get by with that. Still trying to get some stuff here for the Pet Patrol. Don't forget to stop by and see my friend over at 1420 Coffee House 1420 in downtown uh, Vero Beach, 2001 14th Avenue, and say hello to Chef Michael Glotz. Also, um, remember that uh, I'm going to keep my eye on the Village Beach Market. They say right around the end of November, 1st of December, they're going to open. They're trying to get open by Thanksgiving Day, but they say it's probably going to be more like maybe the 1st of December. So, And also, uh, the uh, Polo Bistro, that was the Village Beach Market, the Polo Bistro trying to open about the same time as well. Don't forget to get your flu shot. That would be a really good thing. you got to get a flu shot. Please do that. And also, don't forget to check out my VeroBeach5star.com. It's my restaurant guide. ClassicAmerica.net. It's my music channel. Or MostlySinatra.com. Very good. You should check those out if you will. And uh, have a really, really blessed day. I didn't ask you to push the like button. Please push the like button if you will. Oh, I should have done it back at the beginning. Now all the people who didn't watch it all the way through won't push the like button and I'm not going to get any likes tomorrow. Oh my goodness gracious. And it's all my fault. I take 100% responsibility for it. Have a great day, everybody. See you back here tomorrow.